have you here with me today. My guest today is Dr. Mike Frazier. He's a BYU and UCLA trained psychiatrist and marriage coach. He's been married to his beautiful wife, Elizabeth, for 15 years, and they have five children together. So he knows what he's talking about. He helps men, particularly LDS and Christian men, to have increased, incredibly and increasingly intimate marriages through his program, The Strong Man System, which we hope to learn more about today. He also has his podcast, which I listen to, Strong Men, Strong Marriages, that you should definitely check out. So I'm excited to have Mike here today. Uh, yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, I what prompted this is um, I listen to your podcast. I I like the things you write about and say. I was with I was at lunch with a friend of mine who opened up to me about his marriage a little bit. And in essence, he's always feels like he's begging for sex and settling for scraps. And this seems to be a common theme among some of my other friends. And, and they generally have a pretty good marriage, at least from the outside. They look like they have a really good marriage. And it looks like you had a similar situation in your own life. Can you tell us how, like your story, how did you get to where you are and, and what happened? And Yeah, no, great question. So, um, so we got married, you know, I came in sort of, um, it, we got married in the temple, you know, came in thinking really the, the, the problem that comes up, I think, for a lot of guys, and this was for me, is you have this idea that a good marriage means happy wife, happy life. Like, you've been taught that. It squares up with kind of what we've been taught as Christian guys, like, you know, serve first, you know, take care of her. Um, and then, you know, that will then translate into her also doing nice things for you, like making you happy or being attracted to you sexually, right? So, you know, I went about doing that, you know, I was, um, you know, went to church, I took care of the kids, I made meals, I planned fun dates, you know, I did all the stuff that you would think would turn into a good sex life, but it never did. Um, so I get just like super frustrated about that. I'm like, man, you know, when's it, when's it my turn? You know, when am I going to get something out of this? I felt like <laughs> I would tell myself like, you know, I'm, I'm doing all the crappy stuff about marriage, but I'm not getting any of the good stuff, meaning I'm not getting sex in my marriage is really what that meant. Um, and so, yeah, I get frustrated. Like I go to my car and just like scream. Cause I was like, man, you know, what is up with this? Um, I would, uh, you know, I'd fantasize about other girls uh, look at pornography some that wasn't as much of an issue for me but you know that would pop up sometimes even like girls at church I'd be thinking man you know if I was married to her it'd be so much better um, it was just kind of terrible overall uh, but like my wife didn't even know first of all she didn't even know I was unhappy um, and definitely from the outside you wouldn't have guessed that I was just like suffering and like wishing my marriage was better than it was um, so like it was really, I was listening to a podcast by Jody Moore. Uh, she's um, like a self-help kind of kind of person, but she had this phrase where she said, you are not responsible for your wife's emotions. And like at that moment, I like, I, I literally felt like I was let out of prison. Like I was in my kitchen. I can still remember it. Like looking at the table, like what? Like I'm not responsible for her emotions i'm not responsible for happiness like i couldn't believe it um so like, that contradicts the whole happy wife happy life. yes <laughs> yes exactly exactly because it, it's like there's a, there's a few things embedded in happy wife happy life right first of all uh that it's your job to make her happy right so you go about trying to do that when it's actually impossible to do um the other one is you succeed when your wife is happy, but you also fail when your wife's not happy. It's so like, I always felt like, oh, like she's happy. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a good job as a husband. Oh, she's, she's upset. Oh, I'm failing as a husband. Um, and yeah. And then the third lie, right. Is that if you, if you check your boxes, she'll check her boxes. Um, and so you're always kind of waiting. You're like, okay, like I made you happy now. Like it's your time. It's your turn to make me happy. Um, and so, so yeah, like I, I felt that freedom. I went like, and I think this is kind of common for the guys I work with too. You kind of go like too far the other way for a while and you're like, fine. Like, I don't care about you at all. Like, I don't care if you're happy or not. Like you can be mad and you know, whatever. Uh -huh. Which is also <laughs> isn't a healthy place to be. Either, right. Huh? And it kind of freaked my wife out. Um, but then I kind of like, I found this correct place, which is, you know, I'm responsible for my 
happiness. She's responsible for hers, but I can still choose to be a good husband. It just is without that expectation and need for her to respond in a certain way. And the craziest thing that happens for me and that happens for my clients too is, you know, when you start doing it that way and you're just operating in this way, that's not, it's not needy for her attention. You're doing nice things, but it's not because you want her to tell you how great you are and say thank you and, and have sex with you. You know, when you, when you're not doing it for those reasons and you don't need it, that's exactly when you start getting all of it. That's when she starts appreciating you. That's when she starts giving you attention. That's when your sex life gets much better um, is when you have that shift where I don't need it, right? I don't need it from her. Um, sure, I want it. I want that connection with her. I choose her, but I don't need her to, you know, build me up. Uh, David Schnarch has this quote that says, your wife can prop up your ego or your penis, but not both. Right. And, I like yeah. that quote too. <laughs> I think that quote's <laughs> awesome. Um, it's just so true. Like when you, when you are strong on your own, you know, that's becomes attractive to her. Gotcha. Would, I think it's been said in another way, they call this the, the nice guy syndrome, mm-hmm. where they're like, okay, I read this thing where women get really turned on by husbands that do the dishes or fold the, or do yep. the laundry, yep. the vacuuming. So they go all in on like, I'm going to be the nice husband. I'm going to mm-hmm. do the dishes. I'm right. going to do the laundry. I'm going to take care of the kids. I'm going to help them with their homework. I'm going to put them to bed, draw yep. a bath for my wife. And then she's going to want to have sex with me. Yep. And it doesn't happen. Yep. Why is that? Yeah. So I call this, I call this the mosquito cycle. So like up at the top, right, there's you and there's you doing these nice things, right? You're, uh, you're doing the dishes, you're, uh, you know, doing these things, but like the reason that you're doing them, and I, I talk a lot about, I use a model called the state fair model. And what, what people pick up on is the intention for which you're doing things, right? What your wife is encoding and what she's seen is the reason that you're doing whatever you're doing so like that speaks louder than the action itself doesn't it? exactly no it, it's everything right um and and that's what we sort of get mixed up but the other thing we can't figure out is like what is the right intention you know um so so yeah so the mosquito cycle is you do these nice things but you're expecting something back right and you don't get it, you don't get it, you don't get it. And you keep doing it for a while, right? And maybe every now and then she will have sex with you. So that kind of like reinforces this this part of the cycle. But eventually she kind of gets sick of it. And she, you know, I like to say she like hears that buzzing, like she hears the mosquito, you know, you know, kind of flying around there. So she wants to shoo that away. She wants to swat it, right? And so eventually she stops giving you that attention and you start getting upset, right? You start getting frustrated. Um, so then you explode in some way, right? Either you just stop doing it, you stop caring, or it's more aggressive, like, oh, you know, you don't ever do anything that I that I ask. Um, or, you know, you go to pornography, or in extreme cases, you have an affair or something like that, just to kind of say, fine, like, you're not going to give me what I want, like, I'm going to go take care of it myself. And then you feel bad, right? And then you go back to, like, mosquito mode again, where you're like, oh, okay, well, that was bad. So I better, you know, make that up to her by, you know, doing all this service again. Um, so, uh, so yeah, like that's the, that's the cycle, man. That's the cycle we get stuck in sometimes. Gotcha. So how do you get out of it? Yeah. So what I call what you have to do and says what I call the intimacy cycle, right? So up here at the top, right? It starts with you becoming a stronger version of yourself, so that's strong in spirit, which like I know a lot of the guys uh, here are, are Christian guys. So, you know, it's aligning with that. But beyond that, beyond just like trying to check your boxes of doing what's right or, you know, keeping the commandments or whatnot, it's really about feeling your worth, like feeling your value from God, like knowing you're a son of God, feeling his love for you. I like to give the example of like, if you're, if love is like water in a cup, you know, um, you, if you're trying to get your wife to fill that cup all the time, like she, she also only has like a limited amount, right? She can give you some, but if you're always relying on her, like you can't fill that up all the way. 
but like when you turn to God and really feel that worth from yourself, feel that value, it's like putting that that uh, cup underneath the sink and just turning it on, right? That sink doesn't run out of water, right? It just keeps coming. And then you're able to, to pour out to other people. And, and along with that, the weird part is, right, when that cup is full, your wife is, again, more attracted to you. But if she thinks, oh, here comes, here comes Mike again, like he wants me to, to dump into his cup, like she's going to want to kind of get away, like preserve her, her water. Right? Uh -huh. uh, so, so yeah, like uh, that's spiritual strength. Like it's just like knowing your worth, like feeling that value, um, knowing exactly what you want out of life and going towards it, like determining who you want to be as a husband and being that because you just want to be that right you want to serve her because you just want to serve her um versus you're expecting you know something back from her um so you know that's that spiritual strength to me uh being a man of your word keeping your promises in in all areas it's so like when you just just that like if you can just nail in spiritual strength like you're going to feel amazing. You're going to be super attractive to your wife. Um, but then on top of that, you know, we build up mental strength, which is building up our, our skills of choosing our thoughts. Um, this is where my expertise really comes in. You know, my training and stuff is looking at those thoughts, adjusting them, um, seeing where they're coming from, all of that, so that you can choose those more intentionally. Um, emotional strength, we're able to, to name your emotions, tolerate them well. Um, deal with them appropriately and not let them overrun you. Um, and then physical strength, just like getting yourself, you know, just general physical strength is important. Um, and then sexual strength, which is about, uh, you know, and we'll probably get into this more, but approaching sex in a way that is uh, much more attractive. So when you do all that, like you just, instead of needing your wife to give you something, you don't need anything from her, right? You don't need her to build you up. You don't need her to tell your you're great or whatever, right? Um, and then that becomes attractive to her. And then at that point also, you can start being what I call more intimate. So when you're when you're always concerned about what your wife's gonna say or how she's gonna respond, is she gonna like me? Is she, you know, so I remember like going on dates and feeling like, okay, like I lined everything up really, really good. Like time was really good. She'll probably be in the mood. Um, and then like I say one wrong thing and she it, like kind of gets a sad face. I'm like, oh, I blew great. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Here goes my chances. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh man, like was, all that was for nothing, right? right. Um, <laughs> so like instead of that approach, like okay, let me like walk on eggshells and make sure everything's okay. You come and you are honest with her with about who you are, about what you want, um, and you don't worry so much that she's going to you know, leave you or not like you or, you know, say no to sex or whatever, because you are confident in your position, right? You, you feel confident about sharing stuff with her that she may not necessarily like. Um, you know, a, a good definition of intimacy is knowing and being known, right? And so if you want that, you have to be willing to expose yourself and in the situation where she almost for sure will not like what you're saying. <laughs> it's counterintuitive, but that is what builds like real intimacy, right? And that is attractive and that will create the type of sex life and emotional life and all of that that you really want. Um, also coming, kind of coming back to that strength idea. One thing that a lot of guys do and that I did myself is when you're locked in this happy mind or happy wife, happy life mindset, you just start shutting down everything that you really kind of care about because you're like, human, right? yeah, right. Your own hobbies, your own interests, your right. own development. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because your wife now revolves your life or your sense of self being, your sense of worth revolves around another person. Exactly. Like your wife. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yep. And, and so, yeah, you start kind of closing those things down. Maybe you're not doing as much work. This happened to me. Like I kind of say no to a lot of stuff at work to be, uh, to be around more. I didn't really hang out with friends. If they invited me, no, like I need to be home with my family. Um, like I, I enjoyed playing sports a lot. I had just like shut that down completely all in the name of serving my wife. 
which so it's so crazy when it makes you less attractive to her <laughs> when you do that when you're just like groveling at her feet like oh you know i'll do anything for you it it's the exact opposite of what you think would work because and even like songs like i think about dear future husband by megan trainer or like um uh, what's another one like uh, any man of mine by shania twain like it's out there you know like yeah. the, uh -huh. these girls and if you, even if you ask a girl like what do you want in a man she'll say exactly that. that'll be her line do everything i want basically mm -hmm. um but that's not what creates intimacy it's not what creates attraction right great uh i want to move on to what does create attraction more like step two of, of your system right step one is become strong mm -hmm. yourself. yeah um, any stories you can share from men you've coached like where were they and what steps did they take to get strong yeah so um i'm trying to think of the you know one of the uh, one of the better ones probably the, the most recent guy I've worked with, one of the more recent guys I've worked with, uh, um, you know, he came in, uh, you know, very similar situation where he was, you know, feeling like he was doing everything. His wife wasn't doing much. The intimacy wasn't there. So, you know, what he did, you know, was first, like realize that his worth didn't really depend on her, that he could draw a sense of self from something outside of her. Um, uh, then it was about him um, realizing he, again, didn't need her, right? He didn't need her to build himself up. He didn't need, you know, any of this. Um, and then it's, it's, this is the intimacy part, right? It's starting to, you know, share things that were uh, upsetting, right? It was starting to say things, uh, you know, like she was, she was kind of rude to him a lot and where he got the strength to just say, hey, like, you know, I don't appreciate you talking to me like that. If you do, I'm going to leave, you know, that kind of thing. Or, you know, just bringing up, hey, like, intimacy is important in, in the marriage. Um, like, but guys are already doing that. They're already saying like, oh, sex is important. I want sex in the marriage. It's, it's different when you say, no, like, I want our relationship to be great across all areas. And the way that our sex life is, is a reflection of how other things are. And so like, I want to connect with you deeply and intimately um, because I want that connection with you. I want to know you in that way, right? That feels good. That feels an integrity, right? And if she says no to that, you still feel okay about it, right? Because you approached it in a way that's about connection and and intimacy versus oh like can we have sex again um or can we have sex tonight and then you you know she senses that that's not really about you know the connection it's about her uh you know you getting something out of it and that's the difference um yeah when you don't really need something out of it you just want a connection out of it you know that's what creates you know that intimate connection uh between them so yeah like you, you know one of the things he keeps saying, uh, this guy I've been working with is, you know, and, and this, this consists with all the guys that I've worked with that have really turned it around. They're able to say, and I can say this myself too now, like, I don't really need my wife now. I want her. I love her. I love being with her, but I don't need her, right? If she, if she left, like, I would be okay. Some of the guys I work with, they're pretty far gone, like they're, you know, about to separate or things like that. But even in your mind, if you realize like, hey, you know, like, I'm a good husband. I'm a good catch. If she were to leave or reject me or whatever, like I'm still a good person. Um, I'm still a good man. You know, that it's, it's so weird. It's so counterintuitive, but that is like that thought process and that belief really is what is attracting, what creates, you know, a good sex life and a good intimate connection. Gotcha. I want to be careful to like saying, I don't need my wife makes it sound like, uh, you no longer give her affection. You no longer you like like crossing your arms on the other side of the room. Like, huh? I don't need you. Yeah, like, it's not yeah. that though, right? It's no, not, no. It's just, you don't rely on your spouse to uh, prop up your ego or like your sense of self worth is based on what your spouse thinks of you anymore. Exactly. That's the key difference. Exactly. You still want to love because mm -hmm. that's the kind of man you are. You want to be a loving man, a loving right. husband, father. You're right. Still giving. Right. Uh, it's it's just less of a, um, uh, I don't know, 
It's like, uh, it's like coming from inside of you instead of yes. from outside of you, who you sense or sense the self to be. But it doesn't mean totally blowing off your wife because like, I don't need you anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You still, you know, you decide one, one question I like to ask guys is who decides if you're a good husband? Um, and most guys, if they're in this mosquito mode, they'll just say my wife for sure. Instant, my wife. Um, and of course your wife does like have something to do with that, but like you decide what kind of husband you want to be. Like you decide who's a good husband. And as Christian guys really like, if we're directing it the right way, we're going to say, how does God want me to behave towards my wife? Right. Um, and you're acting consistent with that, you know, and that feels good and that feels strong. And it's not, oh, is my wife going to like this or not? It's just like, no, am I behaving in a way that I feel is right and good and um, in integrity, right? Even that question itself, like, feels different. Oh, will my wife like it? Versus like, no, I feel good about acting this way. Like, I feel good about that. Um, yeah, it just feels different. And one's attractive and what's not. Gotcha. Um, so we, uh, a lot of husbands, they're married a few years. They've kind of settled into a new normal with their wife. They have some children. Now there's a mortgage. Uh, there's career building and everything else going on. And then you're like, well, um, my wife's really only a legitimate outlet. I see you're like, where is she going anyway? You start to like neglect yourself a bit. You put on a few pounds. Um, you kind of, you have bad habits, but you like really don't care to fix them. And then they wonder why their sex life is awful. Like, can you talk on that a bit? Like you need to get attractive again, right? That's, <laughs> That's right. Two. That's right. About. Yeah. You need to do steps to be sexually attractive again. Yeah, exactly. No. So, um, I, I surveyed like 500, uh, Christian wives to do this is when I was still like kind of stuck in that, you know, make your wife happy mode, but the information was still valuable. <laughs> so what, one of the things that, that came up a lot was as far as physical attractiveness, um, it's actually, it's sure. Like keeping yourself fit is important, but actually more important is just like your grooming and the way you smell and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, like, and again, it just, it dials back to why are you, you know, why are you doing these things? You know, it's you striving towards who you really want to be as a man in the world. Like if we're, if we're looking at our Christianity, like, is this the type of man that God would want me? Is this the type of man that Christ would be or not? Right. Does he sit around and, you know, not do anything and not fall through with his commitments? No. Um, and this is what I talk about being a man of your word, right? Like you committed to your wife, Hey, you're going to be someone that I take care of that I'm going to be there for. And so when you stop showing up to that, you automatically become weaker because you have now stepped out of integrity. Like integrity brings strength. But once you step out of that, you start being weak. And weakness is really, at the end of the day, it's, it's strength and weakness, right? Strength is what attracts your wife. Weakness is what repels her. Um, and so that's sexually, emotionally, mentally, all of that. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're in that mindset, like, oh, you know, she's not going anywhere. And, uh, yeah, I'll, put on, I'll not take care of myself. You know, again, like, why would you take care of yourself? You know, if it's just about your wife and attracting her, again, that's the whole problem, right? You're doing this just for your wife versus, yeah, I want to take care of myself because I respect myself. I respect my body. Um, you know, I like feeling healthy and strong, you know, then all of a sudden, th this is what I mean. I don't care about my wife. Like that decision has nothing to do with her know but that is exactly what attracts her to you right she wants to be married to a strong man right who is whose point of reference for strength is within themselves or with god not right. do like what their boss thinks of them or what their wife thinks of them or what their mother thinks of them like yeah point of reference is with is within yourself yeah exactly yeah so if you've been married like 10 years or whatever and you realize you've been you know begging for sex and settling for scraps because frankly you've been like that mosquito mm -hmm. and you realize i gotta change this how long does it take like is this an overnight thing like then tomorrow you're all of a sudden attractive yeah so i'll give you kind of a range like for for some guys like i had um a couple where he had actually had an affair and you know they because they were both kind of into it 
into the process and really doing it like they turned things around in like two weeks and that was after like a major event like in a fair um the you know the other guys that i've worked with they can take you know a couple months of really like getting this that the guy just mentioned he really turned things around it took a couple months um you know some of the guys it took you know it, it sort of depends on how bad things are <laughs> um, you know it can take uh you know six months something like that to where he really but but again this was a guy where his wife said i'm done i want nothing to do with you like i'm gonna walk out uh, he was able to really turn things around it was about six months probably um but what i want what i want to say here really is that the change in yourself can come like instantly like when you really grasp these concepts like the change in you happens right and and then it's just practicing it right you start practicing you know okay like in this situation did i behave in this way or not you know and you start refining it and fine tuning it um but i think you're asking like when do you go how long does it take to go from really like begging for sex to like enjoying a good sex life um so you know i'd say it can happen within weeks uh but i give yourself you know a few months to really see it uh happen of course it depends a little bit on your wife's willingness and her own beliefs about sex and her sexual experiences too um you know uh, in my situation my wife had really bad sexual trauma and so like how much of that can I overcome? Like I can, I can approach it in a much different way than she's used to. And that in itself makes a huge difference. Um, but because there's so much negative memory associated with it, you know, like she has to decide whether she wants to kind of do that work and, and create that or not. And even if your wife doesn't have like a bunch of really negative experiences, she may not have really addressed her own sexuality and like tried to, see it in a way that's positive like if she really views sex as negative you know you can do some about that and you can introduce some new ideas and you know show that your own sexuality isn't about um so i like to think about like three different brains of sex like there's the just like the physical brain that's just about the orgasm right and then right. there's the emotional brain that's about the connection like okay that that validates me okay she had sex with me and i feel good about myself um then there's this uh you know connection brain there's this brain that's about you know real intimacy knowing each other being known um and when you approach it in that way it kind of integrates all of them right um but uh you know that's the that's the real intimate sex the sex that um your wife is really looking for and that you're looking for too you may not have even experienced that at all yet um but when you do like it's magical it's awesome that's great that's great what's the conversation like so you've done the work, you're like, oh, do things get a little worse before they get better oftentimes? Yeah, so sometimes, right? Because you're, you you're know, changing the system, you're changing the dynamic. Exactly, yeah. You know, instead of you um, just constantly, oh, like, you know, uh, <laughs> just trying to do everything that she, uh, that she wants, basically, you are now willing to, you know, say no to things, even to her right? Say, yeah, actually, I don't have time for that right now. I need to take care of this. And at first, she might kind of respond like, oh, like, you know, I'm not important to you. You're like, no, I just, you know, right now, I, I set apart this side of time for work, and I need to do that. And then after that, I can get to that. So at first, right, that seems very threatening. Um, but what happens is you but have- she's used to having you under her, her thumb. Or right, whatever. right. Used- Right. right. And now you're starting to stand up for yourself and that can look a little scary to her. Yes. In the, in the beginning. Yes. Yeah. It seems scary, but then eventually she recognizes that as strength. And so in my mind, this isn't even conscious a lot of the time, right? Like women, they are attracted to strength. They want a man who, who does stand up for himself. They, one thing that I've, that I've read and I believe is that, you know, when you can stand up to her, she believes that you will also stand up for her. Um, and I think that's really true. Uh, and again, it, it, you're not being a jerk, right? You're not saying, oh, like, you know, screw you. I'm not doing anything you want. It's just saying, no, like right now I need to do this. Um, I can take care of that later. Or, you know, I really, you, you that's something you can do on your own. <laughs> that, that's when I started <laughs> using, right? Where, you know, my wife doesn't like to call 
certain places. And I'm uh-huh. like, you know what, I, you can do that. Like, I don't, like, that's something you can do on your own. Um, and she doesn't like that, but then she does it and she learns how to do it. And, and she's better for it. And right. you help become a better person. Right. And, yeah. And, the, but the, again, the weird part is that actually helps her feel safer with you. It's very counterintuitive. Right at first, it doesn't seem like it. Again, she might be upset at first, but what you'll see is the connection comes more later. Or like uh, just a very recent example where, you know, my wife and I had agreed that like we both have businesses that we run. Uh, we agreed that my business would pay for babysitting. And then the babysitter came and my wife was like, oh no, like I'll, I'll pay it. Like, let me pay out of my business. So old me would have been like, okay, like, you know, let me make her happy. She's, she said she wanted it and now she says she doesn't. So let me just kind of do what she said. But I just kind of pushed. I was like, no, I said I would do it. So I'm going to do it. And she's like, no, no, no. Like I said, I'm going to do it. And then, you know, she kind of like was, you know, back down a little bit. But then later that day, like way more intimate, like way more attracted, way more open with me uh-huh. or like another one. You passed uh, the test. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, I got, I just did like a podcast about this and I got some, uh, some uh, responses from women, right. Who were like, no, it's not like that, but it is, <laughs> <laughs> it is like that. <laughs> um, it's, it's like, again, like no woman will tell you this. She won't say, yeah, I want you to, to stand up stand up to me i want you to you know not agree with everything i say they I mean they kind of say that but and you you sort of believe it but then when you try it they don't like it and so if your framework is always make my wife happy when you try that and she doesn't immediately like it you sort of give it up and you're like okay well you know that didn't work you know mike that was stupid advice right but you just stick it out right you know you just stay consistent with it you know, this going back to this this guy that I was mentioning, you know, his wife came in in the morning. She's like, you know, this and this, you know, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. And he was like, no, like, I, I, I can't really listen to you talking to me like that right now. She actually had a panic attack. <laughs> like, oh, she really? Had a, she had a panic attack after that. he stood up to her. Right. Uh-huh. And then later that day, they had a great connection, great intimacy. You know, she apologized, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't act like that. And then she opened up to him about some stuff that was really bothering her, that was deep. Um, but the reason she was able to do that is because she saw, oh, like, you know, he can't handle it. And I really do think a lot of it's unconscious um, that women kind of pick up on that. Yeah, definitely. Wouldn't you rather be married as a life partner, someone you're doing life with, someone that's going to uh, be honest with you and help you like be your best version bur- yeah. bur- rather than just say yes to every little whim that you right. have like, you want a little bit of pushback sometimes right like, well and yeah and i think you uh you really hit it there with um you know someone that sort of challenges you or you know helps you to step it up versus you know kind of uh yeah just being the yes man all the time right and it takes a, a lot of maturity as a couple to be able to, you know, hold two things at the same time. Hold, mm-hmm. like, hold on to yourself. Like, I want, I want to be a man of integrity. I want to be the best I can be. I want to be happy. And I recognize my wife wants this, and it might be different than me. And like, be able to hold those two at the same time without punishing her, without like trying to dominate or feel superior, like to be a real equal with that and work through that. That takes a lot of maturity. And, but yeah. that's, that's the path forward. To exactly. Into- exactly. Yeah. Like to me, this whole thing, it's about uh, learning the, the first and second great commandments, right? Where first is love God. So like, to me, that's building strength, right? Where you are aligning yourself with who God wants you to be. Right. Then it's love your neighbor as yourself, where, I think we get it wrong sometimes in the uh, Christian faith is we say, no, love my wife more than myself, love her more, you know, shut myself down for what she wants and needs, um, shut down my opinions to make her happy, you know, versus love her as yourself, love her equally to yourself, not more and not less, you know, you come in and she, like you just said, she has an opinion and you have an opinion. And then you actually work together to create something even better. Like Stephen Covey talks about it being the higher way. Like there's your way, there's her way, and then there's the higher way that incorporates both of those 
positions, but also, you know, comes to something even better, even higher. And sex and intimacy is really about that, right? Two coming together, making something better than either one can make on their own, you know, whether that's just the intimacy itself or, you know, a, a child, right? That's great. Well, Dr. Mike, this has been fantastic. Is there anything uh, you can share as a, as a parting thought that you would consider advice to a couple that's already at a healthy place? They're already doing the things that you're doing. Uh, what do you consider black belt sex, I guess? Yeah. Got basics down, now they're, what can they do to enhance their relationship even that much better? Yeah, so first I would look really close, um, both of you about like, what is the, what's your intention when you come to, you know, have sex together, you know, is it just about the orgasm? Because that's going to keep you at a certain level. Is it about, you know, you feeling good about yourself? Because that's going to keep you at a certain level. Or is it about really connecting and knowing each other at that deep level, right? About sharing stuff about you that maybe is a little bit scary to share. Is it with sex, right? Like what you prefer and how you like to be touched and like the positions that you like and like a role play you wanna do, it's very exposing, right? Like you're, you're naked and that in itself is exposing, but like that mental exposure is almost more, right? right we Same. all have a little bit of weirdness around our yeah. sex. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Like to share it. <laughs> right, right, Ex totally. And so when you start being willing to share that, um, Again, and, and this comes back to the whole idea of intimacy. Even if maybe your wife isn't going to respond quite how you are hoping, like you still being willing to say, hey, no, like this is my sexual life. This is what I like. This is what I prefer. And she may say yes or no, but just you being willing to do that in itself is awesome. Like it's an intimate act. And what you may find is right at first, she'll say no. And then later on, she'll say yes, or he'll say no, and then he'll say yes. Just be like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe that's not so bad, or you know, whatever. Um, but another like quick tip: this comes from David Schnarch's book, Passionate Marriage, um, great book. Uh, but uh, you, something easy you can do is just keep your eyes open, like during foreplay and during sex, like make eye contact during that. Um, it really takes it to a much different uh, place than you know, just kind of closing your eyes and then going for it, right? Um, you know, when you're actually looking at each other and, you know, experiencing that and seeing each other's faces, it just takes it to much more of that intimate level. That's great. Well, thank you. Uh, if people want to sign up for your coaching or your podcast or contact you, what's the best way for them to reach you? Yeah. So you can head over to strongmenstrongmarriages.com. Um, so there's going to be an email link there. I also have my program. Uh, the strongman system that really walks you through step by step how to do this, how to build strength, how to build up your communication and intimacy skills, um, and you know set boundaries, make requests, you know do all those things that are hard <laughs> right now, um, but uh, are required for an intimate marriage. And it's you know it, it's easier than you think. It's simpler than you think. I should say it's simpler than you think. Um, and once you start doing it, like you don't want to go back. It's uh, it's really great. So yeah, strongmen, strongmarriages.com. Um, yeah, the, my program's there if you click on work with me. Um, and then also the podcast is Strong Men, Strong Marriages. That's great. Okay, well, thank you very much. This yeah. has been great. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. All right, take care. Thanks, you too.